So first I've, I've, I've been speaking about uh, what is frailty, uh, because uh, it's a uh, great interest for the oncologist to uh, be able to see um, who is frail and who is not uh, in uh, patients over 75 years old, for instance. So frailty is a very debated uh, concept in the geriatric uh, world, and I try to explain what are the two main concepts about frailty. Sometimes you can see that frailty is a sort of uh, um, less uh, rapid uh, movement, um, gait, um, um, and so. And also you can see frailty on, with the specific screening tools, um, uh, which uh, allow the oncologist to refer the patient to a geriatrician or not uh, for a, a most important uh, assessment that's called a, a comprehensive geriatric assessment. The, the, the most ancient one is the VES-13. Um, it's an American tool um, validated uh, by geriatricians in a uh, rather broad population, not cancer, non specific cancer population, but a rather broad population. And uh, the more recent one is uh, a French one that we call the G8 because there are eight questions, and uh, in five minutes you can have the, the answers. And then, if the score is uh, above 14, the patient is quite well, not frail, you can uh, go through a normal standard treatment. But if the score is under 14, the patient may be frail and, that, uh, and then could be addressed to uh, refer to a geriatrician for a more complete assessment. Some of the questions are, for instance, um, um, ha, ha, do you have anorexia? Um, did, are, are you able to, have you a good appetite? Have you a good appetite? Are you able to move uh, from your bed to um, walk outside, for instance? Or um, uh, what do you think of your health status? Do you think you're well, you're fine? Or do you think you're very tired and so? Um, um, do you have uh, cognitive problems, uh, memory complaints, or depression? And, uh, and what's your class of age from 75 to 85? It gave a score, okay? It gave a score, and uh, if the score is um, um, under uh, 14, um, the patient uh, may be referred to a geriatrician to have a more complete assessment. Physical assessment, mental, cognitive assessment, um, and so search for depression. Frailty is one of numerous uh, arguments to treat or not to treat, or to give a standard treatment, or an adapted treatment, or a delayed treatment but it's an important uh, point. You have to take in consideration or see uh, the life expectancy of the patient. So the big difference is on the physical state, status of uh, uh, persons uh, in 16s uh, and in 90s uh, years old, because um, uh, frailty, uh, frailty appears mostly after 75 years old and in the population over 80 years old frailty is uh, around 30% of uh, people in great epidemiological studies and um, especially in women. And frailty is predictive for disabilities and death. The oncologists need to um, they need to learn how to detect frailty with the simple screening tools that we try to offer them and to validate in cancer patients. 
I think they could have improved therapy being more um, careful for the potential complications the frail patients may, uh, um, may have during the treatments, you see. And geriatricians are able to, um, I would say, predict a lot of complications when they have uh, evaluate the patients before the beginning of the treatment. For instance, I spoke uh, to uh, today of delirium. Delirium is a, a very bad complication occurring after surgery, for instance. And if uh, the geriatrician has evaluated the patients before surgery, he is able to see that patient um, will have delirium after surgery. And the, 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 the surgical team has to do that and that and not to do this and this. Oncologists uh, must uh, realize that um, all people are a very heterogeneous um, population, which is very different from 60s to 19 years old, or even centenarians. I spoke to this morning about centenarians. And uh, the second point is that they, they have to learn how to detect frailty in their old people with cancer and work with geriatricians to together have a better appreciation of the health status of the patient before uh, doing a treatment. Until today, these tools uh, have, do not, are not validated to, for predictive, predicting uh, adverse events, for instance, during chemotherapy, and they do not predict uh, deaths or disabilities or adverse events during the treatment. So a lot of research has uh, done uh, today about that, but uh, for the moment, uh, nothing has been uh, validated. <laughs>